the Ladypreneurs. So this is not a Technique Tuesday video like we always have in this group. I wanted to just be real and share something with you guys today. Um, it was kind of crazy. I was going back through some of my, my old notebooks um, and this was from quite a few years ago. Gosh, this was... I don't know, 2015 or something. Um, but uh, I think most of you guys know about my um, inner dream stealer story and that inner dream stealer concept. Um, and so I'll kind of just give you guys a, a quick story about that real quick. And then I'll read you what I wrote about it because it's really interesting. Um, hi, Cece. So, um, hi, Leah. <laughs> so we always have... Um, that voice inside our head. Hi, Jennifer. Um, that tells us that we're not good enough and that we're failures and, you know, all of that, right? We're very, very familiar with that inner critic or however you want to call it. And I call it my inner dream stealer. And so story time, I'm going to tell you how that inner dream stealer came to be. So um, quite a few years ago, I did not realize that I could control my own emotions, my own thoughts. I always thought you just kind of had to play damage control with whatever came to you. And that was no way to live life, especially from a standpoint of, of knowing like the gospel um, in the Bible and, you know, whatever you may believe, like it's so interesting that we've been given um, the ability to choose our thoughts and our feelings because we've been given agency. And I did not know this um, quite a few years ago. I just, I spent most of my life thinking that we couldn't control that. Hey, Marianne. Um, and so I was at this personal development seminar and I was really running into a hard time with my business and I was getting frustrated and I watched this guy, um, they, they call it edutainment. Um, he was up on stage and he was teaching us principles about how to run our business better um, through these skits that he would do. And this one hit me hard, guys. Like my whole life changed from watching this skit um, because it was the birth of Inner Dream Stealer. So what happened in this skit is that this um, this man who was, you know, in business, he was getting really frustrated with himself. And every screen, computer screen or mirror or anything where he could see his reflection or have another person like yelling at him, he was yelling at himself. He was telling himself all these terrible things about himself that he would never say to any person on on the earth and you know it was awful he was telling himself like why are you even try you're never gonna get anywhere um, and just all these kinds of things that honestly we say to ourselves in our head huh and um, what was interesting about it is that he had like this vision essentially this person came down and said you know I'm I'm you 30 years from now and if you don't stop talking to yourself like this you're never you're gonna miss out on all these amazing blessings that you're going to be receiving if you can get over talking to yourself like this you know and, and it was a fun skit everyone around me was laughing and having a really good time watching this and I was like ugly crying, like just unbearably, like I couldn't even stand myself because the fact of the matter is, is that I realized that I talked to myself in my head um, worse than I would my own enemy and definitely more, you know, a worse way than I would ever talk to anybody else. Hey, Jennifer. Um, and, and I think sometimes we have to come to grips with that, right? We have to be shown a mirror to be able to see what that looks like. And so I've told this story many different times because from that point on, I realized like that's, that's where I came up with this inner dream stealer concept is that if we listen to that voice inside our head, it really will steal away every single dream that we have. Hey, Jody. Um, and so, uh, thanks guys for watching. And so, um, yeah. So here's what happened is that I, from that point on, I realized that I can't keep talking to myself like that. And I created this blog to be able to help other people do it. And then that, you know, kind of went into a coaching business and everything like that. And it just grew from there. But I wanted to share with you guys something really vulnerable here. These are my notes um, from that night. And I remember, hey, Cindy, thanks for watching. Um, I remember writing this down like through tears in my eyes. 
because I had to just capture that moment right then and there of, of seeing this mirror essentially put in my face of how I talk to myself in my head. Because let's be real, like nobody knows how we talk to ourselves in our head and it affects everything. And so I wanted to read this, guy, this to you guys and it's kind of personal, but it's so true and I hope that it helps you as well. Um, and this was me, you know, many years ago. So I've just been blatantly shown what my negative self-talk looks like, and it was shocking and very painful to watch. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm getting emotional. I would never talk to anyone like that. How did I ever think it was okay for me to talk to myself like that? How am I ever going to earn success with an attitude like that? Am I supposed to be and can be and need to be? Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to be and can be and need to be my greatest supporter. I'm supposed to believe in myself when no one else does. God can only do so much with me, but if I'm not the proper vessel, then he can't do what he wants with my life as I want him to. Negative self-talk and thoughts ruin the plans that God has for me, and that's how Satan wins. No more. I'm tired of letting Satan win this, in this battle that I didn't even know I was fighting. Hey, Misty. It's all about awareness, and my armor against these attacks is my awareness now. I need to believe in myself, and I know God can help me do so. I just have to have faith and do my part. Um, and so there's always these takeaways at the end of these notes, and it says, you know, my part or my takeaway is that I need to be aware of my thoughts and feelings at all times. I must think empowering thoughts and feelings always, which is not always so easy, right? Um, I need to ask for help from God as often as I can. I need him every minute of my life, and I can't be the vessel that he needs me to be without him. Powerful, right? Self-discipline starts with three priorities for me, um, and then I work up, um, and then I need to plan those priorities. And um, let's see, sorry, my handwriting's not the greatest when I'm like in a dark room. Um, and then it says, don't focus on the details or worry. God's got this, and so do I. Isn't that so cool? To be able to read something that I wrote from many, many years ago, and I just kind of look at, I mean, you know, I'm not perfect in any stretch of the means, but it's really interesting because I don't fight those battles as much anymore. And here's the thing is that, of course, it takes years and years of practice to be able to do that. And I've, and I still have my up, up days and down days. In fact, today was a pretty down day. Um, but, but the thing is, is I'm aware of it. I'm aware when those negative voices come and start affecting me and I can see it in my results. And so that's what I encourage you guys to do today. Hey, Amanda. Um, is really just think back on, you know, how you respond when you're in, you know, when you're feeling stuck or when you're feeling frustrated. Do you take a look at your thoughts and really think about what it is that you're saying to yourself and the results that come from that? And how can you choose to stop listening to that voice? Stop listening to that inner dream stealer or that really negative part of you or Satan, however you want to look at it. There's so many different ways, but I think it's all the same is that it's usually Satan. He's trying to steal away your dreams and he wins when we listen to that so I just wanted to share that with you guys um, just kind of from a personal note is one I'm honestly really proud of how far I've been able to come in going from not knowing that I could even control my thoughts or my feelings to all the way teaching people how to be able to do so, how to overcome their inner dream stealer. And I created this whole um, inner dream stealer change process that, you know, if you guys want a, f a free coaching session, I can walk you guys through it. So, you know, feel free to comment below and I'll contact you about it. But, but the fact of the matter is, is that there is a way to control the thoughts and the emotions um, so that you can control your results. And, you know, when I finally was aware of my inner dream stealer, and I was able to really start changing those thoughts and feelings that were holding me back. Holy cow, 
so many doors opened for me and opportunities came out everywhere and they continue to do so because I'm taking that, you know, the bull by the horns, right? I'm not just going through life with playing damage control anymore. Um, and so that's what I want for you guys as well. And so, like I said, this was just like kind of a personal, I mean, not really a technique Tuesday video, but just kind of a personal from my heart moment because I read this and I thought I really need to share this because that's where I was, you know, many years ago and I was kind of in this dark place and I didn't know um, what effect it even had on me. And sometimes we don't realize that either. So, um, awesome. Thanks so much, Jody. I really appreciate your comment. Yeah, Amanda, you're absolutely right. Yeah, that, that itty bitty committee, right? Um, and it usually, I love the fact that you pointed that out. It usually is fear over love. Um, and it's fear over faith too. Um, I was actually just telling one of my clients the other day is that when you are about to make a decision, you know, make sure that you are following faith as opposed to fear. If you're making a decision off of fear, that's probably not the right way to go because we already know that God would never have us fear anything. He's not a God of fear and he's not a God of criticism either. Um, even though there have been times where people have been chastised, that's different than criticism. He doesn't want you to speak negatively about yourself because you're a daughter of God. Um, and so, hi Mandy. Hi Pearl. All right, you guys, this is great. Um, let's see, Amanda said the inner critic would never be... <clears throat> someone we would hang out with. She's awful. I know it's so true. And, and there's actually a technique that I teach people to name it. Um, and I've heard all sorts of names like Ursula and Ben and like <laughs> all these interesting names for, for people's inner dream stealer or gremlin or however you want to call it is that, you know, know when, when that voice is coming and you can say, Oh, yep. I feel Ursula coming on because <laughs> it's not us. It's not it's not really who we are that's coming up with these negative thoughts. It's really the adversary who's like really turning that against us. So, you know, maybe it helps for you to look, to name your gremlin or your inner dream stealer, whatever that may be for you and know when that's coming on. So, um, yeah, perfect faith over fear. Absolutely. You guys are amazing. So thanks for letting me be a little bit vulnerable with you guys today. Um, and yeah, just thanks for going for your goals and dreams and being amazing business women. And if I can help you guys in any way, please reach out. I would love to be able to do so. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Amanda just said, um, Ben is my ex. I will take that as confirmation. <laughs> So yeah, you can definitely call your inner dream stealer, Ben, if you want to. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful night and uh, we will see you next Tuesday.